Welcome, welcome, welcome to another episode of the Everyday Game Changers podcast. I'm your host, Barry McQueen, and you know how we do each and every week, talking to game changers, people that's changing the game in music, business, community, and more. And today is a special guest all the way in Puerto Rico right now, based in Canada, from Canada, right? I got Luke Lentz in the building. How are you? Hey, man. Yo, I'm doing great today. I appreciate you having me on the show. I, you know, it's so funny. Um, when I got the request to get you on the show, it, this was an easy call for me because I'm like, I already know who this guy is, right? So um, usually I got to do my due diligence about my guests. If it's somebody that I'm not familiar with or somebody sends me their story like, hey, man, I think they'd be good. They're doing some really dope things. You should have them on the show. Um, but I'm familiar with you guys already. So um, for those who aren't familiar, give us a little uh, a little background on you. And then, I mean, if they don't know high key, they don't have social media. <laughs> right? Dude, I appreciate the intro. Uh, yeah, yeah. to give you like a, a, a quick 30 second background, uh, I, I run a company right now called High Key Enterprises and we're a public relations firm basically leveling up top 1% of entrepreneurs and businesses brands to the next level completely digitally. So we don't work on any like physical print, physical media, no billboards, only like digital stuff, press, TV, social media podcast, social media growth, everything like that. And uh, yeah, it's been it's been quite the journey. We started in Canada uh, about seven years ago and then transitioned over to Puerto Rico in 2021. Oh, man, it was seven years ago. It happened. That, it feels like it's like like it's been fresh, but I guess you've been on the ground work, right? So it, it's true. It, it, and like things are moving so fast in the digital age, like social media channels just started in 2005 and so just in the grand scheme of like when social media has been in existence and then like the dot-com boom being at like early 2000s too like, it's just crazy like the amount that has expanded and that it's going to just be expanding more and more rapidly over the years what what what's your background how did you get into like wanting to be in that space yeah so my background in terms of prior to starting up a business is practically nothing like just just kind of young hustling like miscellaneous side gigs of uh going on kijiji which is the canadian version of craigslist and buying and selling like tvs and bikes so kind of some entrepreneurial things but nothing really business related just just little endeavors and then uh we started up uh myself my older brother and then a really good friend of mine started up our first business in canada uh, which was an e-commerce company. And okay. we, we we didn't start it up thinking that was going to be absolutely huge right off the bat. We just found a product, which was wireless earbuds at the time. There was no wireless earbuds available in North America. And mm. so we found some and sourced them from China. And we brought them to the U.S. market. And we were like the first wireless earbuds that were sold in the U.S. And so we we had really crappy marketing tactics it, it, where we did like cringy videos. We did product placement inside the videos posted on various Instagram pages. And we, we were able to scale it up to a seven figure revenue business. But uh, that's just be, mainly because the, the product was a unicorn product, just because it was a perfect timing for that product. And what ended up happening is we released more products uh, made some errors with business, that business. And we realized that we were, what we were really good at in all of it was building up our brand, which was like the high key brand, because that's what it was for the e-commerce company. And so we, we took those talents and we created an agency from that and started working with other e-commerce companies. Then we started working with real estate investors, started working with, uh, like some bigger level CEOs and businesses and just really expanded from there. That's dope. Uh, so from it's so crazy because pe- people thought I was a PR guy, right? And I'm just like, they like, oh, how did you start your PR agency? I never wanted a PR agency. I had a market <laughs> company, a digital marketing company called the Brand Castle, where we just focused on the branding aspect, your logo, your website. And then because I was a kind of like a solopreneur for a really long time, I just kept adding services, right? So if we did your website, now you need somebody to market your website. So we did the marketing. Then we started doing social media and then Google My Business and SEO and backlinks. And 
it just the company when COVID happened, I literally lost every client. And for me, it was no. yeah, because was it all in person clients for the most part? Mostly in post person clients, right? So I was dealing with the small business owners in South Florida, the plumbing company, the window company, the real estate offices, and they like the marketing budget was always the first budget cut when they got scared. Yeah when COVID happened. So I was just like, what am I going to do? <laughs> like I left my job to start this marketing company. And then um, I launched a real estate photography company because real estate was booming um, during COVID. And I just completely pivoted, bro. Did a real estate photography company, started really targeting Airbnb and for sale by owners who had really low quality pictures on Zillow. And then I just blew that thing up. And then slowly the marketing and stuff started coming back. But I was just like, you know what? If I ever relaunch the brand castle, it's going to stick to the branding aspect. I don't want to do all these other arms of digital marketing. Um, but it was crazy. So the PR aspect of it was people used to see me getting articles. They like, oh, how'd you get that? And I'm like, oh, man, it might be a little money to be made here. Right. <laughs> so it's like I can I know a guy I can get you some placements so but nobody talks about the PR space like so I'd say I got into the PR space on accident somebody reached out to me and pitched me on doing like a uh, maybe like I think it was like a disrupt article a really long time ago and she's like no I could get you in disrupt disrupt was hot at the time I'm like oh man that's dope and then she's like yeah so after the disrupt article you know I'm thinking about Yahoo Finance what do you think and I'm like oh okay and I'm like, yo, I can do this better than this girl is doing this, right? And then I, that's how I kind of accidentally fell into the PR space. I'm like, all right, who do I need to know that I can get this price point? Who can write these articles? Because I don't have time to write these featured articles. So it was like, but nobody's going to talk about this. It's exactly. grimy PR, grimy, bro. Yeah, it, it, dude, what what we're doing with and and it's it's cool. It's that uh, it, same way where you had an initial starting point. You realize your clientele like needed all these other services was literally asking you for these other services. And so it only made sense for it to be an extension of those services. And so w- when you when you're in a place where you have a marketing company and your clientele is one of those other services, your only other options are like white labeling the services out we're getting a referral partner that you trust to like refer that business over to or taking it in-house and doing it for yourself and all those have their pros and cons and so you really have to like weigh the options and another big factor that a lot of business owners this is just in the pr space but this is in every single business is that you you have to you have to weigh like your focus into the equation because if you're taking on a project in-house or white labeling a project it's your focus going away from your bread and butter. And so that's something that we've constantly had to weigh where like over the years with building up the PR firm is we've had opportunities to get into new spaces and we've offered it and then had to pull back from that because it was taking away from our core services. And so we've always had to weigh that. That's dope. What, what, what's some advice you could give to somebody that want to get into that PR? Like, because you guys are at a level that probably... I, I, I like to say that the PR space was archaic for a really long time, right? You get a client, they keep you on retainer, they pay you three, four grand a month. You just pitch, pitch, pitch to a bunch of people and hope somebody takes the story, right? That's the old version of PR, right? Dude, dinosaur, <laughs> dinosaur. Bro, and that that's actually why we got into the PR space. It, it, so... So back in the e-commerce company, we paid a PR firm, a traditional PR firm, huge PR firm. I won't mention the name, but uh, they sold us on a package and it was around $10,000 a month. And we were working with them and no guarantees. It was on an ongoing basis that they, they pitched us where they were very confident that they could get our ideal publications that we were wanting over the course of a year time frame. Basically, a few months passed, nothing happened. We, we set our concerns. They said, listen, it, this is just the beginning of the package. We're building our relationship together. We set expectations with you that we needed you on for a minimum of a year to get development. And we're, we're a bootstrap startup company. We can't be paying 
ten thousand dollars a month like these massive fortune 500 companies and so what ended up happening at the end of the day we canceled the contract spent so much money tens of thousands of dollars and got really nothing in return and then it wasn't until a couple of years later when we started up the agency that we got introduced to different aspects of the pr world right. and we saw the whole other it, kind of like how you saw it and we're like wow this is this is unbelievable <laughs> and we just we took that and we, we ran with it like now we're now we're really like we're doing a combination of guaranteed and earned media together and right. so yeah so we still do the pitching because it's invaluable in, in my opinion but then 100%. we also yeah, yeah, huge. And then we also do guarantee, like we we're partnered with some publications uh, that are are massive, like massive like fashion and uh, business publications that we, we can guarantee our clients to get into. And that's the thing I think that was like for me. I'm like, man, the PR agencies. Once I kind of felt like somebody pulled the curtain back and showed me a little, right? I'm like, oh my gosh. So they really, for three months, can get paid a retainer for three months and no don't have to get you anything right and they just dangle the carrot of like hey you know we're building momentum just bear with us to the point where somebody gets so frustrated that like y'all you know what i'm done but they already got four months worth of money so i feel like but that's, that's how kind of how i got into marketing right the marketing agencies was the same thing Marketing agencies was like, hey, you know, we're going to be doing some SEO and some backlinks and some all of these things that business owners don't know none of this, this jargon. Right. And they'll give you a report every month and you don't know what you're reading. So when I started doing <laughs> marketing, yeah, yeah, I started doing marketing. I'm like, yo, I really want to change that perspective of like, let's be transparent. Like, no, the phone's not going to ring on day one. There's no magic button that I hit that makes leads come in, right? But let's do it the right way. And then organically, let's build some momentum and let's mix it with some ad spend and do a combination of these things. Um, and some business owners get it. And some, when they hear the word marketing, they're, it's cringy to them, like marketing yeah. company. <laughs> it's like- cringy. I know, I know. And, and it really is exactly what you said, where you have to be transparent from the beginning. The phone isn't going to ring right off the bat. Like the greatest asset of, if you're talking about press or like the majority of public relations, which is just the aspect of building a person's brand, the biggest component is that increases the brand's credibility all around. And so it, it does so many things where if they're running direct advertising, that when somebody searches them up on Google or searches them up on social media, increase conversions because they have that increased credibility when they're hiring for job positions in the future. The biggest thing that people do when searching for jobs is they search the person up on Google and go to their glass door, go to their Google reviews. Do I want to work at a company like this? And so it's huge recruiting for uh, the sales side of things for retargeting. It, it, it's absolutely massive. And it's like those hidden stuff where there isn't a direct ROI because it's not direct advertising. Right. When I look at yeah. high key, like I've seen a lot of the, um like the giveaways was like a big thing, right? With the cars and with, I seen Rick Ross and I seen Tiger. <laughs> Oh baby and i'm like high key could legit be a record label by the time this is finished <laughs> and find an artist and put them under high key records right so so we literally had that we had a an opportunity like that really? and yeah and that that was that was kind of one of the one of the things that i was mentioning with you in terms of how we've had certain opportunities come up that we've had to say no to to right, keep right, the right. focus on on things where we did want to get into that, it's just that we weren't prepared for it because none of us have been in that side yeah, of the music it's another industry. Beast. It's another beast. No, huge, another beast. Yeah, but d doing the celebrity collaborations was was huge. Like that obviously got some natural earned media without us having to do any pitching, and then uh, was really big just for uh, g getting brand deals in general, saying that we're a we were associated with those people, which was which was really good. What was the thought process behind like, yo, this is a good marketing strategy to put some eyes on what we do? Um, how do, is that just like a think tank? Y'all just sitting around and like, yo, I got an <laughs> idea. Let's try this, right? 
is so at the we weren't the inventors of of celebrity giveaways on Instagram. What we were is we we took the giveaway model and we saw that nobody else was creating a brand around it, and so we created a brand around it with high key clout. And so what it was, was at the time we were just managing people's social media accounts. So we had, we, we had like 30 people under management for social, maybe less under management monthly retainer with us. And all of them were coming back to us being like, I love the content, love what you guys are doing, but I'm not getting the social media growth that I want, especially right. Instagram. The right. natural engagement just isn't the same as it used to be. Right. And so what we did is we were going out searching for other opportunities. And what happened was we saw Supreme Patty doing a giveaway and we were connected with his management at the time. And so they offered us spots in their giveaway campaign coming up. And we, we sold all the spots that were allocated to us, to all of our clients. And we said, wow, th this might be, this might be even easier than bringing on social media management clients. Right. That's what happened. We ended up selling more than, way easier and more than what we were selling. And then we got to the point of selling so many spots in other people's giveaways that we said, let's create our own brand around this, do our own giveaways, sell all the spots ourselves. And so that's what we did. And then we, we got some partners in it too that brought us bigger and bigger celebrities. And there was a huge snowball effect. After we, after we got Kevin Hart uh, and, and did the giveaway with Kevin Hart, we were able to get any celebrity we wanted. We, could, we were just able to use the names that we previously had. And then everybody knew that we were paying a really good amount. And so people started naturally reaching out to us too. That's dope. Where, where do you see Instagram a year from now? Because when... <laughs> You know, that's, I know that's a big market for us, right? With the Instagram, with reels, with the giveaways, with social media management and the shift from, you know, photo to video, to all the changes that's happened with Instagram, the lower engagement rates and how everything is changing. What do you see with, like yeah. in the future? <laughs> yeah. Instagram is, is an interesting one. I, I've wrote I've wrote a ton of articles over the past three months, specifically about Instagram's crisis compared to how they have so much attention being lost to TikTok and YouTube Shorts, and how the I, I wrote one article about uh, Instagram having an identity crisis, where basically they're just constantly playing copycat where they started as a photo-based platform, like you said, and now they're transitioning majority to video when that's not even what their user base really wants. And it's just for the aspect of competing with TikTok and YouTube to get new users when they already have all the users and they should just be trying to increase the engagement and the, 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 the viewership, the time on the platform and stuff. But it's hard to compete with that when you have such good platforms like TikTok that feed you exactly the short form video content that you want. It's hard to compete with that time on the platform with just a photo based platform, even if they went back. So they're going to have a hard time. I think that Instagram over the course of the next five years is going to be still the majority uh, landing page. And uh, it's going to be a huge landing page, like a digital business card, basically. And the majority of people still, when you meet somebody, you never say like, what's your TikTok? It's always what's your Instagram. <laughs> 100%. <laughs> and, and no matter how big TikTok grows, I just don't ever see that being a thing compared to Instagram. Instagram is like the staple for that. And that's because people, people take so much time on all of the content that they post on the feed, especially in the business world side of right. things. Right. And then uh, I, I see that TikTok completely taking over all, all engagement and YouTube shorts is probably going to uh, run it up to with, with with all of that. My wife probably has not opened her Instagram in probably over a year and a half, but That's she's wild. on TikTok every night. Did you catch up on my TikToks? Did you catch up on them? Like, no, nah, I don't go on TikTok like that. But she's a TikToker, not to create content, but just to consume it she'll she'll like i'll say hey you want to watch a movie tonight she'll be like yeah if i take too long to find the movie she's already in tiktok, TikTok. yeah like she's already like you know what let's in a little bit i'm i'm catching up on tiktok right now like that's her thing and i'm like wow like this is that's really a lot cool. of people's thing yeah and i have uh -huh. it. it's good stuff on there she sends me great stuff funny stuff diy stuff that i've never known like the bottom tray of the oven was supposed to be for warming food. I didn't know that. Like that's where we put all the 
where I put all the pots and pans that we can't fit in the cabinet, right? So it's I, I like the 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 entertainment aspect and then the education aspect of TikTok, but I just I, I always wonder would TikTok, I mean would Instagram be my space, but I think like you said, that is the new business part. I can't go nowhere without they don't even want your number while you're right there. I'm like, yeah. yo, put my number in your phone. They're like, oh, it's like, what's no, your, Instagram. What's your Instagram? Yeah, yeah it's yeah. crazy. So go ahead. Yeah, I was just hanging out with 10, 10 business uh, dudes. We had like a, a, a kind of a little mastermind here in Puerto Rico because it, people don't get together too much in the business aspect. And at the end, when we were all saying goodbye, not a single person exchanged their Instagrams and not a single person exchanged their phone numbers. Everybody exchanged their Instagrams. It was hilarious. Well, and so this is what's crazy. So my Instagram got verified maybe six months ago. Um, um and then I just woke up one morning and somebody said, yo, your blue check's gone. And I'm like, really? They like, yeah, like, I don't know what's going on. So then I reached out to a couple of people that I knew and I'm like, yo, what's going on? And they're like, yeah, man, I got clients that's losing their blue checks. And blah, blah, blah. I'm like, this is not good. <laughs> like, because in the PR space, people that I worked with, you know, they can earn media to make sure they can get verified and all of these things. And I literally have a, a whole thing into Instagram and still haven't even heard back on what happened. So then this article comes out, somebody sends me this article and they like, yo, um, people were trying to trick the Instagram algorithm. And the fake people. blue text. Yeah, yeah, fake yeah. Blue text. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, but my situation was not even that like, they, like they were showing like a doctor was trying to get verified, but he put out some music on Spotify. Yeah. Look like he was a music artist. And I'm like, oh my God. But my thing's always been under entrepreneurship or like an author because I've published some books. Um, but just disappeared, bro. No clue. I got a case number with Instagram. Haven't heard anything back. And I literally noticed once I lost my blue check, I started losing deals. Like, marketing stuff uh shout out campaigns like once you lose that blue check that's it like i'm like wow like this is great it's currency if done like you the right start way. you start losing sales even yeah because a lot of people that did outreach to me from like they almost turned me into like i was an influencer because yeah i had some influence and a lot of people that follow my brand are people that's either got a nine to five and they working on the side hustle to quit the nine to five or just yeah. the whole entrepreneurship space. Right. Um, that's my audience. Right. So people want to tap into that. Um, so the brand deals and the shout outs and the campaigns, once I got the blue check, they just like went through the roof. So for six months, I was just like, wow, I'm going to leverage having the blue check where most people probably not taking advantage. And I'm like, yo, I understand it's currency to other people. To me, it's just a blue check. I'm, I'm still a real Straight person up. offline, yeah. right? It, it didn't. Yeah. <laughs> it's not like when the blue check happened, my bank account went like, no, <laughs> the blue check. So, but I understood what it did to other people and I wasn't uh, oblivious to that, but I was just like, I started to see the decrease in the demand when I lost it. And I was like, oh, that's crazy. Luckily, some of these people, we already just had a relationship, so it didn't really affect much. But I'm just like, oh, my gosh, this blue check. People will, like, give their first kid away for the blue check. Like, <laughs> crazy. Straight up. Do you see that, though? No, no, 100 percent. 100 percent. The majority, the majority of conversations of people uh, that come to us, it's it, it's literally around, like, I want the blue check, like. Oh, you guys do press? Like, do you guys also do the blue check? Like, literally, it's hilarious. It's, and I'm, and I, I don't think, like, when a, a guy asked, like, when I got mine, I used to get the DMs. How'd you get that? I must have got a million. How'd you get that? And I'm like, let's be clear. I started my personal brand in 2018, right? So this is four years of work of trying to get to a point where my credibility is good. I got some good press, some earned media, some paid promotions, some, I put a book out, like all, it's a combination of all of these things that got me here. Like, let's not, it's no button I pushed and the check showed up, right? Like, 
you know how many denials I got trying to submit it myself through Instagram's at like come on like but that blue check is everything to everybody so I like I'm like you gotta leverage it the right way though yeah because it's the digital business card it's like it's, it's like everybody having a, a like a, just a regular like black business card and then somebody has like a gold business card 100 <laughs> so yeah. I'm, but when I say it was like getting crazy, so like when I used to go to restaurants, I wouldn't post at the restaurant until after I left. But after I left, the owners would see that I had a blue check and they'd invite me back for free food. And my wife's like, what's going on? Like, we come to this restaurant all the time. I'm like, yeah, but I didn't have the blue check the last time we came when I posted and the owner's like, oh, we would love to meet with you. We really like the content you created when you was at our space. And, and I'm just like, this blue check is like a, a drug for people. And I'm just like, so I'm like, I got to work to get it back. <laughs> but it's like, to me, I'm just like, uh, I'm over. I see what it does to other people, man. It's crazy. Yeah. Changes. <laughs> it's sad. So, so what's the future of high key look like, man? What? Because you got high key enterprises. So I know that. When somebody put enterprises in the name, there's some other things, <laughs> there's some other things going on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. For 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 right now, what we see the future for high key for the next five to ten years is really running up public relations. Like we wanna we wanna make a huge indent. I, I feel a lot of people are getting into the PR space. And like, like us, like right now, tons of other, like basically like boutique firms that they call it, but nobody is attacking the, the big dogs. There's billion dollar public relations firms out there doing the, the, doing the same shit where it's, it's retainers, no guarantees. And it's just not modern, modernized. And the only reason they're able to get away with it is because they appeal to Fortune 500 companies. And so we want to come in and we want to take all the market share of anyone who's practically not a Fortune 500 company and is, is needing to pay more attention to their marketing budgets and stuff so that we can actually help them like with their entire campaigns. And so that, that, that's the goal over the next five to 10 years is make a huge impact in that space with high key. And then we might be branching off into, into other things after that with the, yeah, with the high key enterprises. Got you. What, what's, what's, if a, if a business wants to come and approach you, what's a, what's a, what's, what's a rule of thumb that you can give them to say, Hey, look, if you look at even get in this space and you really looking to take your personal brand serious, what should they be budgeting? What kind of should they be a lot and roughly to be able to even start? Yeah. So there is tons of boutique PR firms that are, and I, I'm not sure what your rates are, but tons of boutique PR firms that have pretty low entry points. Like there's some that you can get in for say $5,000 a month and they have some like pretty good services that I've talked with and stuff. Uh, but for us particularly, we're appealing to the top 1%. And so we we have definitely on the higher end of packages in like the modern PR space. And so people should be allocating around like 10,000 a month, but working towards getting like with that being guaranteed media, like, you right, know, right, exactly, right. you know, exactly what you're getting beforehand. And so. Again, like small businesses, I wouldn't be suggesting for them to be going into that range and really small, (laughs) small businesses that aren't turning a huge profit, really anything under really anything under a million a year, they should really be doing their own PR. They should 100%. be bootstrapping their PR. They should be having the founders should really be reaching out to people, reaching out to articles if they if it's industry specific, reaching out to potential opportunities themselves because it is a very important aspect and very expensive that it makes sense to keep it in house until it gets to a point where your business is big and you need to you need to outsource it. That's dope, man. That's not nah, that's yeah. good information, man. So y'all hear that from from somebody dealing with the top one percent. So when you're not there yet. In house, man, I, I tell people like when it came to like doing PR, like I, I reverse engineer right when I was working on my personal brand, it was just like, look, I couldn't afford it, but I knew I wanted to. I had to get my name out there because I used to be in the music business, so I was trying to get away from my rapper name and transition to like using my real name in business. And that's because, hard because the people who were important in business they didn't care that I used to be a rapper right or that I was signed to a major label 
they that, that's pennies to them because they're doing stuff on another level that they know that music money is we know what the music money is right <laughs> so yeah so i had to really in 2018 i went to a thing called the millionaire's brunch and my friend was a concierge at a hotel here in miami he's like yo i'm gonna get you on the list for the millionaire's brunch and I'm like, yo, put me on a list. Like, I'm going to get in there and work the room, right? So he gets me on this list. And this guy's like, hey, man, how are you? And he's like, um, I'm such and such. And I was driving my Kia Optima, right? This is like my good car at the time, right? And this guy pulls up in a Kia Optima in black. Everybody else is like Maserati, Rolls Royce, Bentleys. And I get out the car and he's like, hey, man, how you like that thing? And I'm like, oh, man, it's good on gas. Like, I'm up and down 95. I love the Optima. So this was my good car, but he was talking like this is his play car. Like, he's like, oh, my wife drives the Jaguar and she drives the Lambo. But I like this kid, man. It's good on gas. And I'm just like, this guy, right? So we just kind of hitting it off. And then he says to me, he's like, yo, what do you do? I'm like, oh, you know, little digital media and marketing. I'm like, what do you do? He's like, um... I invented like a, a part that goes on airplanes that no plane can fly without now. And I was just like, <laughs> like, what? So he's like, yeah, man, like it's been good meeting you, Baron, man. What's your Instagram? And I was so embarrassed because I'm like, I cannot give him my rapper Instagram. And from that day, November 18th, 2018. I'll never forget it, bro. Whoa, no way. So you didn't give him your Instagram and you're like, oh shit, I can't have that feeling again, meeting entrepreneurs and not giving them my business card type thing. That was it, bro. I got his email and phone number. And I that day I went home and created a brand new Instagram, which is the Instagram people see today. Dude, and that's that was, a damn good story. Do you, do you post <laughs> videos about that? That's a really no, good story. <laughs> no, but that's the truth. That's the truth, man. Yeah. 2018, I, everything. I'm like, yo, I took down the Facebook. I started from scratch. I'm, like, yo, I'm gonna go by my room. No, nobody spells their name how I am, so it should be available. And that day, I looked at my wife. I'm like, yo, I gotta, I, I gotta leave that rapper persona where he was because I had retired already from doing music. But I couldn't use that. And that's how that was the start of my personal brand journey. Right. So I've seen all of these people who were writing articles and I'm like, well, how can I be a writer or a contributor to those publications? And then I just started reaching out. So if you see me, I got a disrupt. handle, I got New York Weekly handle as a journalist yes. writing. And I'm like, yo, this was my way to get in without having the money up front. Right. Straight up. And th th that's actually one thing that we tell clients that are, aren't, say, the top 1% where yeah. we, we, we don't want to leave them empty hanging after they say get on calls with us and stuff. And so the biggest thing that they can do is become a contributor at like free or very low cost to entry platforms right. where it medium, Thrive Global, uh, New York Weekly, Disrupt. Th there's, there's tons of them. And that is an amazing component PR where you're publishing directly on these platforms that have high domain authority and they allow you to publish about your own business and expertise. It, it's a great form of PR. I, you know what I was watching? I, what, what I saw when I was trying to get in that space I was looking at the top guys that was kind of in the space that I did, right? Ty Lopez, the Gary V's, the Grant Cardones. I literally wrote down a list of all of these guys and I started noticing that they were all published authors, right? They were all contributors to these different sites. I'm like, oh, okay. And then I just really reverse engineered that. I Straight started up. being a contributor to all of those sites. I put a book out, all of these things. And I'm just like, oh, so in that four year span of just work, because I didn't have the capital, I'm like, yo, I have the sweat equity though and the hustle to get it done. And it just like, it just happened, man. So. Dude, really good, man. Really good. But nah, man, we definitely going to connect, man. Give me, what's what's one last thing we, we got to share that we don't, we didn't talk about. I see this little countdown meter here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Three minutes left. Well, yeah, your, your, your audience is uh, majority people getting into uh, entrepreneurship or maybe like just started entrepreneurship. Eh? Correct. Yeah. So they're like, the, they might got a little side hustle or they might get started a little e-commerce or some Forex or just trying to find something that they can do 
to probably eventually supplement their income and get into this entrepreneur space. Yeah. So like a big component of advice that's really quick is uh, I believe in taking the biggest risks as possible when you're young. So mm. if you're, if you're coming out of high school, if you're in university, that's the point, or even coming out of university, any point in your twenties, you can take the biggest risks. And how I always thought about it is I started up my business when I was in grade 10 mm. or grade 11. And so I thought about where coming out of high school, the business was doing well. And so it was an easy move not to go to university. But I was like, I was always thinking about where I could miserably fail for just even the next seven years. I could wake up one day, be 26, and I would still be completely fine as long as I learned more mm. uh, in the fields than say in university if I was to take a business degree. And that's, that's cool. for the most part. And I'm seeing that more now than ever. Like we're hiring a ton of positions at high key and we have it all on our LinkedIn job postings. And it's funny to me because when I'm looking through jobs where it, it, it's really now more than ever, I, I, when I'm looking at resumes, I literally don't even look at the university at all. Like not even a single component. It, right. it, it's literally not even, I don't care what degree they had. I don't care how long they went to university for. It's literally just their past experience. Oh, oh uh -huh. man, Luke, man, I appreciate you for your time. I got your number. We definitely going to connect, man, but I appreciate you. And we're going to be in touch with High Key, man, and the <laughs> enterprises, man. We'll put all your social medias. Um, and I appreciate you, bro. I, I appreciate you having me, man. And yeah, we'll for sure connect. All right. Bye. Yeah. Take care, man.